We're back with another Starbase summary where I tell you what I think I see, and you usually disagree with me. Actually, you agree with me a lot of the time, but we're going to start off on December 11th, just a couple days ago, as we saw that crab stand, the static fire stand, getting moved around. Also, a booster section here, heading into Mega Bay 1. I do read all the comments, by the way. Like, when I joke about that, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I read almost every comment that comes through. But here we have Ship 33. It says being revealed. We sort of saw it there before, but it's going to come out and play, it looks like. You can see it's on the stand there underneath. Forward flaps are folded down. Aft flaps are folded in, coming right at the camera. And then Mary's going to scoot over to the side here. So we catch this thing turning onto Highway 4, doing a little J-turn there, and heading away from the launch site. Actually, towards the, actually not the production site, leaving the production site, heading to Massey's is the view and expecting a test campaign over there at Massey's. Let's see how much of that we get in this video. It looks cool with the static fire stand, the, the like wide stance of the static fire stand, clearly leaving a uh, space underneath the vehicle for it to light its engines while it's still on the ground. Also, a quick update on Boca Chica traffic. You can see it's slow on Highway 4 out there today. Spend some extra time on your commute, especially if you're trying to get home. Here it's uh, actually turned the corner already. You can see it turning the corner to Massey's. Those power lines marching off in the distance. Here's another camera. We have a lot of cameras out there, I guess. Of it going across the moat and scooting over to where it will do its test campaign. That's too cool. All the way back out th at the vertical launch area. This is tower one, I'm going to assume, because we're looking up at an angle, so it looks like that's already mounted on a tower. You can see the protective plate over the uh, quick disconnect for the ship there. There's the chopsticks and the catch pads and the rail system. A couple workers for scale. You know how it is out at Starbase. There's an aerial work platform. Are we cleaning? That looks like a miniature little roller. But it looks like it's white. What's going on there? Okay, is that a different color roller? All right. And a couple little welds here. For welding or cutting, that really looks like welding. All the way out on the end. And here is the... Ah, this is a close-up of the crate. Look at this. Is that a... Oh, yeah, I guess there's a... Hmm, all right. They're tied off, at least. Uh, this is a close-up shot of the back side of this crane. You see the big yellow crane lifting this methane tank. And then all the way at the back, before they do a big lift like this, they'll, they'll add weight to the back of the crane. The crane is not just balancing, or I guess the crane is balancing. The crane isn't supporting all of that weight. It's really balancing the weight of the load that it's picking up here, the big tank, with all the weights on the back of the crane. So the crane's not trying to tip over or anything like that. So there you go. You can actually see it. They picked it up and moved it in the back a little bit. You see it moving in the back of the crane. I know. We're lifting a big tank, and I'm more interested about the weights that swung out on the road. Look at that. <laughs> So again, it's all the math and angles and lever arms and distances and stuff like that. But uh, they know how much the load is supposed to weigh. They know how far away from the pin they're going to move it. And they know how much mass, therefore, they can put on that back part to uh, make it so the crane is triangles all the way down and has an easy time of moving that thing. Too cool. Here it looks like the chopsticks. They're swung over to the pickup position but they are moving up the tower while swinging over the OLM, eh, maybe halfway. Oh no, one swung over a little bit and then they opened is what happened. Well, cloud for scale there. You can't really use clouds for scale. How big are clouds? I don't think anybody really knows how big clouds are. It's probably the one thing that would just surprise you. You're like, oh, how big is that cloud? And it's like, it's the size of Houston or whatever. I don't know. Pretty sure clouds are big. You can see, it, watch, if you scroll that back, when these move, you can actually see the tower itself shake a little bit. Testing into the night here as the stars in the background wheel past the camera. And here is Ship 35, all the way back at the production site again. It's like a payload 
section was added to it. And you can see the new fin designs really well there. Look at that, how they're not exactly uh, 180 degrees, I guess, across. Well, they're not right on the middle. They're sort of tucked up around the back a little bit so the, uh, the heating doesn't get them. Here you can kind of see it. You see how they're not really exactly on the side. They're sort of up around the back. So as the ship is sort of belly flopping through the atmosphere, look at that. Okay, that's cool. It's literally rolling through the Star Factory. I've seen a lot of nose cones inside the Star Factory, like this nose cone <laughs> inside the Star Factory. But I, 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 is that the first time in one of these videos we've seen a, a nose cone structure moving through the factory like that? I don't know. Maybe I was talking about something else sometime in the past and I, I didn't notice what was going on there. But uh, anyways, that is too cool that that massive structure can move around inside the factory like it does. Mary catching some more shots of the header tanks there. Of course, nighttime is the best time to see into the Star Factory. So you get that nice uh, contrast with the lights inside instead of the lights outside. The sun, I guess. Outside. The light, singular. <laughs> Glancing off the windows, making it hard to see. Looks like we're in for some more chopstick testing here. I'm wondering, did they change something? Did they need to do some more calibration on how quickly they move or how much they shake or rebound or whatever? I don't know. There's the ship cryo stand in the background there. It's not actually connected to the ship. Of course, the tiles you see in the background, those are further away. The cryo stand is in the foreground there. I was going to go for a wee and far away joke there, but it didn't really fit because the cryo stand is not wee. They're both just far away. That's some work over. Yeah, what are they? Tapping with a hammer? Is that what that was? Maybe breaking scale off. You'll see that sometimes on the weld, where they do the weld and then they break the scale off the weld. There, we've got some scrubbing happening. The crane is doing anything right now? That blue end of the crane just swinging back and forth. Nope. All right. Well. Head back over this way, and this is a second methane tank. From this angle this time, Mary shot showing the uh, weight in, the counterweight in there. And that's why they have it out like that, right? They're increasing the lever arm there. You could put more weight closer into the crane, or you can put less weight further away from the crane on a lever arm like that. So I know that they've done the math on that. That's just too cool how that whole system works. And they swung it out over the road. Are they going to unload it right there? Oh, we didn't get to see the end. I wonder if they disconnected it right there. Anyways, the attendance of the OLM, all of the work platforms, up and about. Not nearly as clean. Remember, I made a comment in the last video about how clean it looked. They were getting it all ready for that static fire we saw. And here we are back to work mode. It's not clean mode. With all the equipment and just the scaffolding. It's not quite there yet. But here they're getting stuff done again. What is inside his helmet? Is he just adjusting his helmet? I was looking at stuff like that. Like, what was he doing with his helmet there? How many people are in this shot? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's like that. It's, does anybody know what I mean if I say the Richard Scary busy city with the little worm that would ride in the car, right? And you like look and you're like, oh, it's a hippo delivering the mail. It's the same sort of deal. Not really. I don't think anybody's going to know what I'm talking about there. Look at the flaps on that. Those forward flaps look wonky. Like the ship almost looks unbalanced now. Interesting. I know it's uh, better from a physics perspective or an aerodynamic perspective, or really uh, realistically. A heating perspective, but it doesn't it doesn't look like aesthetically as balanced. Interesting that we still used murder cam here for a shot, but whatever. That's the camera that has a blinking street light next to it sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's affectionately called murder cam when the uh street light is blinking like that. It looks like an alley you do not want to walk down. What is this? 
That's a spin prime? I mean, wow. Spin prime, so exciting. I'll be honest with you, spin primes are like not the most exciting thing you see. <laughs> it goes, I guess, the bottom half of a vertical tank driving. I mean, what, whatever. Like, honestly, spin primes, cool that they get done. A lot of times it's like, oh, this whole big thing, and we're going to do a stream. We're going to talk about, oh, look, there's ice forming, da 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 da. And then the spin prime's like, <laughs> it's somewhat anticlimactic if you don't understand the important of the t the importance of the testing let's put it that way here's some here's some new shots so uh, building the flame diverter there in the background this is a similar shot for before so if i was looking at that before trying to figure out what's going on that was the flame diverter there's the thrust simulator now this is the same thing that was labeled cryo stand earlier i guess they cryo it, and then they put thrust on it, and there we had zoomed in, and you could see the, the rams, the hydraulic pistons going up. So maybe that's the technical difference there. We just got that wide shot of Pad or not wide shot, sort of a, a little bit of a close-in shot here of Pad A and the tank farm, and they're, they've really plumbed in those hippos there. The people who find this video for the first time are like, what? He's talking about a worm driving a car, and they've plumbed in the hippos? I think one of the comments last time said, <laughs> said no, nah, maybe I shouldn't say that in here. Anyways, I do read the comments. I even laugh at some of them and will thumbs up most of them. Some of them I, I reply to, maybe like 20% uh, of them I'll reply to if I really get a chuckle or something. But I do read them. I try to answer questions if people are asking questions. There's a tank that just got verticated. I do. I appreciate y'all taking the time to watch the video. So I, I think it's fair for me to go through and see what y'all say about it. I was thinking about doing like a, a highlighted comment or something. I d it probably increases the workflow a little bit. But every now and then I get like one comment that makes me like sensible chuckle extra. Chuckle whatever. I don't know. And I'm like, we should put that in the next video. It's a featured comment. But maybe a thing for the future. Hey, working on uh, an acronym video for y'all, by the way. There was a lot of good feedback on that. My name's John. You know me, hopefully. All the folks out there at Starbase, Mary and the SBL Ops, making sure we get that footage. But for now, that's the end of the Starbase summary, and we will see you nerds later. Thanks for watching.